Hey, everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes, and this is the official. Um, I'm emailing NHL.com to put the official trade list for the Arizona Coyotes. I'm tired of seeing all these proposed trade lists by, you know, whoever it is, Sportsnet or some no name journalist on Twitter with a blue check mark. But if you want a real Coyotes perspective on who the Coyotes will pretty much in reality trade come April 12th, I think this is pretty good. Maybe a couple reaches, which I'll get into, but. Because we're talking about trades, decided to don the Reebok Coyotes jersey with number 16, Max Domi, which we all used to love. And it's funny because in fall of 2019, I think, or even after Domi got traded, yeah, pretty sure after Domi got traded, I actually made this makeshift nameplate. As you can see there, it says Chica. And I was on this jersey for about a year, maybe two years. And then obviously we all know what happened um, uh, in the year 2020 with our former GM. So let's just get into it. I think realistically, these are five players who the Cowdies could move. Um, Bill Armstrong said on a radio show a couple days ago that he's gonna let the next two weeks decide whether the Cowdies are gonna be sellers or buyers. And that's because the Cowdies are one point behind the fourth spot in the playoff race, behind the St. Louis Blues, who actually do have the hardest schedule remaining in the whole league. So, I mean, in my last video, I was, I was ranting about how the Blues have a hard schedule. I didn't know that they had the actual hardest schedule. And a lot of uh, projection models are saying the Coyotes are gonna make the playoffs. So I guess that's good news. So we'll, we'll get into it. I think Broussard, he was going to be a sought-after guy. We uh, got him by trading Derek... St uh, we got him because the Cowboys traded Derek Stepan for a second-round pick. Excellent trade. He's a center. You know, a lot of teams looking for a depth center for a playoff push. He's cheap as hell. One year. Well, not even one year left. All these one-year guys have, like, 20 games left. So you got 20 games at $1 million. I expect a third round for Broussard. You know, I was leaning towards maybe if the Cowboys could get, could get a second round for him, but Eric Stahl just got traded for a third round pick. And Eric Stahl put up big numbers in previous seasons, even though he's 36 years old. Broussard's 33 years old, but I feel like Broussard's point production has been lacking for the past several seasons compared to Eric Stahl. And Stahl was on the Buffalo Sabres, who are a really bad team. So I think, you know, Broussard will probably fetch a third and not a second. I think Stahl, Stahl has more in it in him to give than Derek Broussard. Uh, Broussard's replacements, if you could read this, I'm not sure you can, are Barrett Hayden and Lane Pedersen. Lane Pedersen has been practicing with the Coyotes, so that's why I'm thinking, you know, a centerman might be moved out because he is a centerman. And Barrett Hayden, who only has four points in 14 games currently with the Tucson Roadrunners, if Broussard goes, I think that's a signal to bring Hayden back up. You know, fills in that third line center role, uh, could play on the power play. It's time that, you know, Tockett put some offensive firepower back into the lineup with Barrett Hayden. After Broussard, I think the most valued guy, well, did I say that about Broussard? The only reason I have Goligoski second is because he has a no trade clause, so I put him second compared to Broussard. But Goligoski, I mean, even though his points aren't there this year, he hasn't scored this year. Oh, he has one goal. He has one goal. Um, and he costs a lot more than Broussard. So, yeah, that's why he's second place. But he's a great defenseman. He could get points on a better team. A all-around great defenseman. He could play in your bottom pair. He can play in your first pair. He's not making any boneheaded moves this season. Uh, even last season, he looked pretty good. When he first came to the Coyotes, he was making a lot of defensive mistakes, but he shorted up. He's a great veteran guy. He His cap hit is $5.5 million, so I'm sure the Coyotes would have to retain some of that if they do trade him. He's worth a second-round pick. I think he's a great pickup for any team looking for a playoff push. Skoligoski is a great defenseman. It might, it's going to be pretty hard to replace him. I have his replacements as Jordan Gross and Kyle Capobianco, both who had terrible debuts this season and who have yet to hit 
uh, the Coyotes lineup since those terrible debuts. But Jordan Gross has been practicing with the lineup more and more. So you need sort of an offensive type guy to replace Goligoski. And that's why I have two two uh, good puck movers in Gross and Capobianco who need to work on their defensive game. So they're, they're good replacements for Goligoski. Moving on, we have Jason Demers, one year, $4 million. Uh, pretty bad this year, being scratched. Uh, he hasn't scored yet, not getting much points. A bit uh, questionable defensively, probably worth a fourth round pick if uh, I erase my bias. But to get a third round pick, I'm sure Bill Armstrong could make some moves. He got a second rounder for Derek Stepan, so I think he could make, you know, some uh, some negotiations to get Damaris for a third round pick. You know, Florida Panthers uh, just lost Aaron Ekblad for the season. They are already looking for a defenseman prior to his injury. Damaris has some ties to Florida. We, requi- we acquired him from the Florida Panthers, so maybe there's something there. If he goes, uh, Labushkin will be his replacement. Right now, Jomerson's injured, so that's why Labushkin seems like a permanent Coyotes roster player. But once Jomerson comes back, and if we do trade the Mares, then Bush will be a definitive defenseman on the Coyotes. And the Mares plays with Ekman Larson, and the next defenseman who plays good with Ekman Larson is Labushkin. And Labushkin's having a couple of great games lately. He's having a really good stretch. Uh, he's getting in on the offensive plays, taking shots. He had a great assist on that Schmaltz goal Friday night against the Sharks. So Boosh, uh, he's, he's, his contract's expired uh, this summer. I hope Bill Armstrong does re-sign him. Moving on, a bit of a couple reaches here. Goalie Antti Ranta, who's currently week to week on injured reserve, but he's been on injured reserve already for about a week and a bit. So trade deadline's in another two weeks. So I'll be three weeks of injured reserve. I don't think his injury is season ending, so maybe Bill Armstrong could pull some strings and get him traded. Uh, if it wasn't for his injuries and his tremendous health concerns, he'd be worth a first round pick easy, but just gets injured all the time on and off it, off the ice. He gets injured and misses a lot of games. He doesn't play a consistent string of games. He's in and out of the lineup. A second round pick is some correct value for Antti Ranta. Maybe a forward, a depth forward. I can see the Coyotes' needs right now are draft picks due to their uh, Chan Chaika penalty. But draft picks and forwards are their needs. And I think if you get rid of all these guys for all these draft picks, you know, you're refilling the cupboard. Um, this draft is going to be a wonky one because not a lot of players have played a lot of games. The first round is going to be a shit show. I think if you accumulate a lot of second round picks, you're you're going to find some good value. And all of these guys, if you have a good negotiator, they could fetch second round picks. Uh, It'll be hard, but, you know, Demare is probably the hardest. But uh, you could get these guys from second rounders. and, And the Coyotes already have two second rounders drafts of picks in 2021. So if they add a couple more second rounders, that's great for draft capital. The replacement for Antti Ranta is already Aiden Hill. Just needs to continue playing like the way he's doing. Maybe work on his rebound control. A bit amateurish for me, but Aiden Hill makes me calm as a fan when I'm watching him. He's got a couple wins. He's standing tall. He's holding the fort while Kemper and Ranta are on injured reserve. Obviously, you don't see any Kemper here because he's not getting traded at the trade deadline. And for my last one, I had trouble either picking Fisher or Kraus, but I think Kraus holds a lot more value considering he scored 15 goals last season. He's struggling this season. He has two years left at a million and a half dollars. So if you're a playoff team, you know, Kraus gives you a playoff push for this season. And the next season, he's a former first round pick, 11th overall by the Florida Panthers. He scored 15 goals last year. He's a fast, big power forward who could hit and fight. Uh, that's a second round pick for me. His replacement would be Michael Bunting. And uh, I would also put Tyler Pillick there, but Pillick's on injured reserve. I think Pillick's just a better loss in Kraus 
Kraus is struggling very hard this year. I love Kraus. It would be really, really tough to swallow to see him go at the trade deadline, but he's not producing, hitting a lot of posts. He has great value. Because uh, he's underperforming, they could get a, a good second round pick for him. Um, Tyler Pitlick, I hope they sign him longer. I think he's got a two year deal with the Coyotes. And I like Pitlick a bit better than Kraus. If Fisher go, I could see Fisher get traded, but he's worth like a fifth round pick at this point. He doesn't produce, he's just a good penalty killer, fourth line guy, doesn't really fight as much. A bit of a gentle giant, in my opinion. So Kraus bit off the board here but uh, I think there's a lot of underlying value with Kraus and some teams would love to have him and he wouldn't be missed much since next season or this summer actually Bill Armstrong has a lot of cap space to fill out these forward spots and get some good producing offensive forwards and he's already got a replacement in Kraus with Tyler Pidlick who fits well with the Coyotes in my in a perfect scenario I would hold on to Kraus in the summer, let go of Fisher, put Kraus as the Fisher replacement, and Pitlick is your Kraus replacement, and then get some good scoring wingers throughout the lineup uh, in the off season. So that's it. No uh, Keller, no Schmaltz, no Garland on this list. They're not going to be trading them at the deadline. If anything, they would be off season trades. A lot of those players, well, only Schmaltz and Keller. Uh, and Kemper carry a high cap hit, so I don't think they will be traded at the deadline. Connor Garland is a heart and soul of this team. Bill Armstrong said he's going to let these two weeks dictate which direction he's going to go, and I don't think you trade Garland based on two weeks of Coyotes hockey performance. I think they're going to reward Garland with a nice contract in the summer, maybe five by five. I think it's fair for both camps. Um, I mean, you look at Jacob Chikrin and uh, Christian Dvorak, they signed for about upwards in the four million range for about six years. So I can see something along those lines. Uh, Jacob Chikrin, excellent value. And so is Christian Dvorak if he's more offensively consistent. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And thank you for your support.